Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1982 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Detroit Tigers and the Baltimore Orioles at Memorial Stadium. On the mound for Detroit is Jerry Uger, whose record is 5-3 with a 3.75 ERA. And pitching for the Orioles today is Mike Boddicker, whose record is 1-3 with a 5.40 ERA. Okay, we got a lot going on today. Uh, just a quick recap of yesterday's game. Uh, we won 13-3, our fifth uh, uh, win in a row. All five starts, the starter has got the victory. So that was kicked off by Jerry Uger uh, with that 3-1 to one, uh, victory versus the Brewers. And now we got Jerry Uger on the mound today. Yesterday, Lou Whitaker hit two home runs, as you can see down here, two home runs for Whitaker. He's had four home runs in the last three games, so we're looking at him today to keep the uh, home run streak alive. Uh, also, we have the draft today, and uh, we're going to uh, have the draft immediately after today's game. Uh, but So this is going to be a long video. Uh, this is going to be a full game, plus the draft afterwards. I was considering breaking it up and splitting it into, into two separate videos. But we're just going to knock it all out together, and uh, if the um, it, the game is too much for you, you can advance to the uh, to the draft. I'm not going to be mad at you. I mean, why not? If that's what you want to do, I'm not going to stop you. Hey, look, I'm going to show you real quick. Here's the draft. Uh, we're going to click on scouting. So this is ranked by the Detroit Tigers scouting department as the top ranked players in this draft. That's how we're going to look at it. We have the 21st pick, so we are looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So, in theory, if everything goes in order, Dwight Gooden may be available for us. Now, we need hitters. We don't need pitchers. We have a lot of pitchers coming up through the minor league system. Uh, but we will always take the best player available, and if that's Doc, we're going to take Doc Gooden. If not, we have all kinds of hitters. I can almost guarantee you every other uh, batter, every other uh, draft pick will be a batter. Uh, the Phillies have the first overall pick, so uh, I'll be curious to see what they do. I also wanted to do this. Be patient with me here for one second. We're going to look at the transactions from uh, of the uh, draft from last season. Here is uh, the first round. <clears throat> it's a little discombobulated, but the first overall pick last year was Cal Daniels from the Cubbies, and uh, Daniels did play at age 17. He did um, get immediately called up, and uh, you can see he's in a single-A ball. So Cal Daniels was the number one overall pick last year. That was the Cubs, and then Lenny Dykstra went number two. Mark McGuire went number three overall to the Mariners, uh, only 19 career home runs in the minors. So far in these two seasons, Bobby Bo, Mike Stanley, Mike Greenwell, Javier Ortiz, Mike Hoff, Ma uh, Matias Carrillo, Fred McGriff, Denny Gonzalez. Look at that. Uh, Eddie Edward uh, Edgar Martinez to the Mets. Um, and you can see here Randy Johnson, uh, the pitcher. Oh, this was last year. Okay. Someone confused me on the uh, Facebook baseball mogul page. So Randy Johnson was drafted by the uh, Reds who are in the playoffs. Uh, race right now. Um, I wonder if he'll get called up. He's only 18. He's technically on the block. That's insane. And uh, at any rate, the Tigers' first round draft pick was David Cohn. That's who we took. He's looking good in the minors. And you can see the rest of the first round. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we'll, we'll round out. So that's just a quick recap of last year if you were curious. Let's go ahead and get to the ball game. Uh, after today's ball game, we have the draft, then we have a day off, then we go home to face the Indians, and guess what's back? The robot race. So we have that to look forward to as well. Okay, so thanks for watching, everybody. I like it or subscribe as we get today's game moving along here. It's taking a moment to load uh, like we need any other uh, things to slow us down. There we go. It's coming around now. So, Jerry Uger on the mound, having some pretty good success this year. 5-3, and three, that 370 ERA. The Orioles' current lineup uh, for today is batting 276 against him. All of the bullpen is available. 
Uh, we have to give um, Mickey Hatcher the day off. He's listed as tired. So our best hitter's out. We're going to have Guy Salars in there. This is a scheduled day off for Lance Parrish. So Bobby Ramos, who had a good first game back, uh, is in the lineup today as well. We have um, Reggie out, and uh, Kirk Gibson will be the DH. So Ricky in left, you know, uh, you know the deal. We're going to do the official lineup rundown right now. Okay, here's the lineup for the Detroit Tigers today against Mike Boddicker. Batting leadoff, playing second base, is Sweet Lou Whitaker. Batting second at shortstop is Alan Trammell. Batting third and DHing is Kirk Gibson. Batting cleanup in left field is Ricky Henderson. Batting fifth in center field is Andre Dawson. Batting sixth at first base is Greg Brock. Batting seventh in right field is Kevin Bass. Batting eighth at third base is Guy Solars. And batting ninth and catching today is Bobby Ramos. Mike Boddicker, I looked it up. His very first career start in 1980 was against the Detroit Tigers. And that didn't go so hot. He's 1-3 this season with a 5.40 ERA, 15 Ks, and 30 innings pitched. Opposed to batting 309 against him. I believe he was injured. Yeah, he missed a month of this season with a torn quad. Uh, his game log, I don't think he's... Yeah, he did pitch against us. His second start, he went 80 pitches, uh, giving up seven runs in five innings, including nine hits and two walks. So hopefully today we can bat him around like we did last time. Here is the Orioles defensive alignment. Looks like the exact same lineup from game one. And Sweet Lou leading off. Let's lead it off with the home run, Lou. Lou's got 10 home runs. And he drills it deep to left center field. It's going to fall on the warning track. And be caught by Luzinski. One down. Next up is Trammell. Trammell, slow roller to short. Play made by Yount. And then Gibby's up next, and he hits a ground ball to short. So, quick 1-2-3 inning for the Tigers. We go to the bottom of the first. Here is the lineup rundown for the Baltimore Orioles. Batting leadoff in center field is Omar Marino. Batting second and DHing is Alan Bannister. Batting third at shortstop is Robin Yount. Batting cleanup, playing first base is Eddie Murray. Batting fifth in left field is the bull, Greg Lusinski. Batting sixth at third base is John Castino. Batting seventh in right field is Kenny Singleton. Batting eighth and catching is Ray Smith. And finally, batting ninth, playing second base today is Wayne Krenchicki. Take a quick look at Jerry Uger. Five and three. He's got as many wins as he did last year. Only 14 strikeouts, though, in 58 innings pitch. More walks than strikeouts. I never like to see that, but opponents... And, and the opponents are batting 296 against him, so it's odd that he's got a... Um, a 370 ERA, he's given up nine unearned runs, so the defense has let him down. Um, take a look at his log. Yeah, he pitched against Baltimore, got a no decision on April 19th, going six and two third innings, giving up only one run, and still could not get the victory that day. So, Uger got the, uh, the all ball rolling against the Brewers, started this five game winning streak. Let's see if we can keep it moving today. There's the Tigers defensive alignment um, with uh, Gisa Lars, that 92 rating at third base and 85 rating behind the plate for Bobby Ramos. Omar Marino leading off the game, leading the American League in stolen bases with 34. Only caught stealing three times. I think he's got a 15 stolen base lead right now in the American League as he flies out to the left. Ricky Henderson makes a grab. Alan Bannister up next. Hitting a ground ball to short. Two down. And Robin Yount pops it up. Another quick one, two, three inning. We go to the top of the second.
No score. Cleanup hitter Ricky Henderson leading off today. And he walks. Do we go on the right-hander Boddicker? Let's take a look. 76%. I like that. Uh, we're going to hit and run, though. In yesterday's game, as uh, Dawson grounds to sh third, in yesterday's game, we won 13-3, right? I did not hit and run one time. And that's really my go-to move. Uh, like on the dance floor, I do the robot. So, like, uh, this is my go-to move, hitting the old hit and run. As a wild pitch moves Henderson to third, the bases are drawn in. Uh, the infield is drawn in. We're going to try to do a sack fly here from the Brock Ness Monster. Oh, come on. I mean, I, if this would happen to me, I would have been pissed. We scored a run off of it, but it takes a... It takes an RBI opportunity away from Brock. It doesn't make any sense. So back-to-back wild -back run. It's one nothing Detroit. And then the Brockness monster connects anyway with his sixth home run on the season. And it's 2 nothing Detroit. Nicely done by Greg Brock. Kevin Bass up next, batting 271. Flies out to center field. Two down. And here's Guy Solars getting a spot start. Striking out on a slow curve inside. We go to the bottom of the second inning. 2 nothing Detroit. A couple wild pitches and the home run by Brock. Give Detroit the lead. Eddie Murray leading off. Slams it on the left field line. Off the wall for a double. The leadoff man is on. That is Murray's 14th double of the season. He's batting 359 right now. And then Greg Luzinski comes up and walks. Probably a good move. Opportunity for a double play. First and second. Nobody out, though, for Castino. Castino batting 232 versus right-handers. Oh, he goes the opposite way for a base hit. Murray scores. Oh, Murray holds it third. The third base coach was asleep at the wheel. That should have been a uh, should have been an automatic uh, send. But we'll um, we're going to keep everybody back. We'll give up a run for a double play, especially with uh, Kenny Singleton at the plate. Oh, base hit the left. This is going to be one of those games. As now the Orioles tie it up on a two RBI single from Singleton. Now we got to pull the infield in. Catcher Ray Smith up. And uh, he gives it a ride to left center field. That'll be deep enough for Castino to score. And just like that, the Orioles have come back and put three on the board. That's only the first out. Number nine hitter Krinchicki up. Hits this grounder to short. They get the lead runner at second. They can't turn two, though. And we're at the top of the lineup again with Omar Marino. He gets a base hit to right. Krachicki goes to third. First and third, two down. Three runs already in against Uger. And Bannister is going to clear the bases with a shot into right center field. A two RBI double. And after giving uh, two runs in his favor, Uger's given up five. That is the 22nd double this season for Alan Bannister. All right. Um, I mean, what are we going to do? We're going to pitch, I guess, as Yount hits a grounder to second. So the, after winning five in a row, this is going to be the uh, revenge game where the uh, opponent puts up a shit ton of runs. Bobby Ramos leading off with a base hit in the center field. He went two for three in his first game back, and he's one for one today. Runner on first. Here's uh, Sweet Lou. 0 for five in his career against Mike Boddicker. There it goes! Oh, my God! Five home runs in the last four games that is insane oh my goodness 
Lou Whitaker's got 11 home runs from the leadoff spot. Two run shot, and it's five to four. What is going on right now? Travel walks. We're gonna let Gibby swing away. Gibby's had a hot bat lately too. He's got eight dongs. Oh, he takes straight three looking. Come on. Threw him four slow curves in a row. Okay. Um, all right, we're going to swing away with Ricky. He's in the cleanup roll for a reason. There we go. Base hit to the right side. Trammell holds at second base. And now Hawk is up. And Hawk has been a little bit better lately. Um, he's got his average up to 205. He is pretty clutch. Not today. Strikes out looking. Didn't even take the bat off his shoulder. And that'll give uh, Greg Brock a chance here to be a hero. Uh, weak grounder to short. So we're going to leave a couple runners stranded, but we do get two of the runs back. It's 5-4 to four now. See if Uger can get through this inning. Oh, shit. He walks Murray. This is the way last inning started when they batted around. We may very well be uh, pulling Uger here as Luzinski pops it up. The bullpen is all available, and we have the day off tomorrow, so we can use everybody if we need to, and we might have to. A balk. Unbelievable. A balk moves Murray to second. And then a base hit. That's it. I was already out of the dugout before that ball even made it through the infield. We're going to take out Uger. We're going to bring in Cappy. We've got a switch hitter, a righty, and a lefty do up. And uh, he can go two. And then Brian Kelly can go through the righties. So one out, we got to pull the infield in. We cannot give up another run. As Capozello faces Ken Singleton. And there's a base hit into center field. This is the way it's going to be, folks. This is, game is going to be a big FU to me. We'll pull the infield in again. Brown ball to second. Lou goes home with it, prevents one run from scoring. And now Cappy's going to face Wayne Krenchicki. Lefty on lefty. And another wild pitch. There's been three wild pitches and a balk today. Absolutely stupid. And then Krenchicki swings underneath that curveball. It's high in the strike zone. Tigers get out of it. They give up another run. It's 6-4. to four. Bottom of the fourth inning with Kevin Bass leading off. Let's get another rally going. Ground ball to short. Bass grounds out for the first out. One down. Diesel Lars. Ground out to second. And Bobby Ramos. Base hit into left. Bobby Ramos is back, baby. No, we're not going to go for two. Ramos back up to 233. And here is Lou Whitaker. You do not want to pinch the Lou. Oh, he goes the other way for a base hit. Ramos has to hold. He slows his molasses out there. First and second now. And Trammell, one swing on the back and give us the lead. Two for four, two walks against Boddicker. Uh, he gets jammed inside. And we leave a couple more base runners stranded. We go to the bottom of the fourth. It's six to four. Baltimore. We got a lefty and two righties up. We're going to let Cappy try to get through this inning. He's going to have to go after Omar Marino. And Marino beats him with a double. Oh, it's a base hit into left field. Good job by Ricky getting it back in. And will Marino be going... Now, we have a left-handed pitcher up there, so the odds are going to... The percentage must go down. If I were to bring in Brian Kelly, 
It would probably go up a couple percentage points because he'd be a right-hander facing the other way. So we're going to we're gonna pull third base in. And we are going to see what happens. Okay, this is total bullshit. Unbelievable. Another wild pitch, really? And then down the line. A double by Bannister, his second double of the game. And it's seven to four. I mean, this is, yeah, there's no way. There's nothing we're going to be able to do today. I'll bring in Brian Kelly, but it's not going to make a difference as he walks you out. We just got to play it out as he strikes out Murray, strikes out Uzinski, walks Castino, and then a ground ball to first by Singleton. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing you can do in those situations. Seven to four. Uh, we're not out of it by any means. I mean, we've, our offense is definitely um, starting to light it up a bit as Gibson flies out to center. Ricky strikes out. Andres pops up. All right. We're going to the bottom of the fifth. Smith, Krinchicki, Moreno. Ground ball to second from Smith, and Whitaker tosses him out. Another walk. It's three walks for Kelly. And another hit for Marino. One down, runners on first and second. Bannister flips it into right. Bass makes the play. Princicki's holding. Two down for Robin Yount. Yount grounds it to Brock. And that'll do it. So finally, one of our pitchers puts up a goose egg. We're going to the sixth with Greg Brock leading off and a base hit in the center. Seven hits given up by Boddicker. Hit and run opportunity. Bass has been playing pretty good for us as we've kind of given him the um, yeah, fantastic as he uh, lines to do a double play. Uh, we've given him right field and he's done a lot with it, really. Yeah, there's, there's no chance today, folks. We're going to bring in um, Tom Hume, who's really been super overused. But, you know, what are you going to do? That's what he gets paid for. Murray grounds out to second. Bull gets a bit, uh, ground ball to third. And John Castino pops it up. There you go. Good job by Hume. We'll probably bring him out for another inning. And that's going to do it for Boddicker. Not particularly a great performance, but he did give uh, three shutout innings in a row. They're going to bring in Quiz, who is their setup man, actually. The closer is uh, Bruce Suter. As you can see, Quisenberry, side armor. Submariner, I think, actually. Uh, 23 games, 2 and 4, 386 ERA. 7Ks only. 300 and. Uh, 316 opponents batting average. Five saves, four blown saves. Let's blow another one right now. Bobby Ramos grounds out to short. Here's Sweet Lou. One for one with a walk against Quiz. And he grounds out to third. And Trammell grounds out. Wow. Detroit has gone stale. Okay, we go to the bottom of the seventh. Kenny Singleton leading it off against Tom Hume. Base hit to right. Ray Smith up next. Line drive to first. Singleton gets back. And we got a couple lefties, so good job by Hume. 
We're going to bring in Comstock. Pitched yesterday. Pitched well. First time we've seen him the whole month of June yesterday. Grounder to short. Return two. Oh, come on. Unbelievable. Three wild pitches, a balk, and an error now by Trammell. And then Marino makes him pay. All right. Yeah. Pops out. That'll do it. There's Suter. Wow, they're just... <laughs> they really want this victory. It's not even a save opportunity. All right. Bruce Suter. Underrated hairy guy. Gibby. Base hit in the center field. I've been so focused on getting this stupid game over that I didn't even look at the in-game stats. Player of the game so far is definitely Lou just keeping it rolling. Uh, we're just going to let Henderson swing away. We need a lot of runs. We'll take all the base runners we can get. A base hit and a walk now. And um, Dawson's coming out. We're going to bring in Reggie. He's been terrible. Terrible lately. But he's a left-hander. And uh, he definitely has power. And he also hits into double plays. All right. So we're going to bring in Eddie Miller to play center field. Uh, we need three more outs. We got a, uh, yeah, why not? There's no point in bringing in another right-hander. Uh, Comstock gets right-handers out pretty well anyway. As uh, Murray batting right-handed versus the lefties. Then uh, Luzinski just drills it to dead center field. It's 9-4. to four. Justino strikes out. Walk. And Smith flies out to right. Okay, we're going to the ninth. And then we'll close this baby out and we'll go and, um, and do the draft. So it's sad to see the... Um, Five-game history come to an end, especially in a, such a shitty manner as uh, Solar's walks. Two walks for Sutter? Does he... Yeah, I guess he walks more than he strikes out. That's weird. There's just some inconsistencies in this game. Um, Ramos two for three today. We're going to let him swing away. We're down five runs. And Whitaker will get one more shot, anyway, to uh, hit a home run. Here we go. This will at least make it interesting. Defensive indifference. That's how I feel about this whole game. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So here we go, folks. Here's the draft. Um, we draft 21st. So it's going to go ahead and just get started without us. And we'll recap it here after we go. Oh, no surprise. Let's go ahead and close this out here. Wow. Um, so Barry Bonds goes overall number one to the to Philadelphia. Now, I had forgotten up until last night uh, to add baseball cards for the draft picks. So I did go through and I started adding some, but I'll have to go back um, like later tonight, add a few more and add a few more. Uh, we won't see any of these players likely, but... Barry Bonds uh, does go number one overall to Philadelphia. Very cool. Brett Saberhagen goes to Kansas City. Big surprise there, right? Thomas Howard goes number three overall to Cleveland. Really needs good players. And they took Thomas Howard for some reason. Mark Grace goes to Seattle. Doug Jennings to Atlanta. Dave Martinez to the Sox. The White Sox. Chip Hale. Stan Javier, Jay Buter to the Cubbies, Rick Reed to Pittsburgh, Rafael Palmero to the Dodgers, Brady Anderson, <coughs> excuse me, 
to Montreal, Ellis Birch, Trent Hubbard. We've got uh, Craig Graybeck. I mean, really, they could have had uh, anybody, but they took Craig Graybeck in the first round. Kevin Elster, Kevin Mahat, Daryl Hamilton, Gary Cooper, and Alan Anderson goes to Baltimore. So who is available? Doc Gooden's going to be out there. We know that. Uh, amateur draft. Okay, let's look at the scouting. So there's Kevin Tappany. Is the my scout says the best rated player left, and uh, looks like he has the second highest peak. Uh, compare uh, the only other one would be Roberto Hernandez. We don't. We're not drafting a reliever in the first round. So our options are Kevin Tappany, which we don't need. Uh, Greg Hibbard, we don't need. Barry Larkin, I would draft him, University of Michigan. Doc Gooden, I would definitely draft Doc Gooden. Will the Thrill Clark, we have Andres Galarraga in, um, I think he's in AAA now. Uh, so that would be a possibility uh, for the future. Oh, uh, just I'm looking for names. Uh, I think Can Jose Canseco's in this one too. He must be really far down the list. There he is, right there. Okay, so to be totally honest, I am thinking of Barry Larkin. Because uh, we're getting Barry Larkin as a rookie, as a, a, a new entity to the game. And we have Alan Trammell, who was our team MVP last year. But Trammell is poor defensively. Um, and I, he doesn't rate well in the future. He's really young. But we've still got three or four years. We'll, ha we'll have his peak years. And then he will probably go to free agency. So I think we take Barry Larkin over Dwight Gooden. That's my options. And that's what we're going to do. So, and the Reds coming up next probably would take Larkin, right? Okay, so we're drafting Barry Larkin. Welcome to the Tigers. Let's just take a look back at uh, the first rest of the first round, and then we'll just keep this rolling. All right. Scott Lucader, Detroit Tiger, goes to Cincinnati. Kevin Tappany, nicely done. Will Clark goes to St. Louis. Greg Hibbard goes to Boston. Jeff Manto, I met him personally, nice guy. Goes to Houston. Warren Newsom, uh, Twins first base coach still, I think. Um, Philadelphia. Oh, we're into the second round. I get it. So second round, Dwight Gooden goes to the Cubs. Wow. Canseco. Uh, Goes to Texas. Incavilia goes to the Dodgers. Eduardo Jimenez. You probably don't know who that is. That's okay. He is a career Mexican League player. Once hit 45 home runs in the Mexican League. He goes to the Mets. They're using some of their uh, foreign dollars on uh, Eduardo Jimenez. Uh, nothing, uh, Jeff King, pretty decent third baseman. For a very short period of time. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our draft pick. Who is the best available? David West, longtime New York Met. We do have Joe McGrain, uh, Tampa Bay Rays announcer, and longtime St. Louis Cardinals guy. Roberto Hernandez is out there, highest ra uh, peak <coughs> rated player. Again, forgive me, my allergies are killing me. Um, uh, well, okay, so like, these are all pitchers. Who is still out there? Uh, Mark McLemore, not a lot. I like about him. Chad Cruder. Roberto Kelly, interesting. Kind of a five-tool guy. What is his speed? 87 as of right now. Wow, defensively. I guess he's only 17, but defensively. In the outfield, doesn't look great. But um, but we do like him. Uh, Ozzie Guillen, too late for him. BJ Surhoff. 
I like B.J. Surhoff a lot. I put B.J. Surhoff in the Hall of Fame in another simulated season that I did. This is before he got his teeth fixed and before he got that weird mouth. Like, if you just put your hands over his eyes and look at his mouth, you'll have nightmares. Um, okay, so let's... Uh, man, I feel like we need to go with a as many hitters as we can get. Do we go Billy Joe Robido? It's one of the greatest names of all time. No power, though, for a first baseman. Or do we go with Mark McLemore, who um, can really pretty much play anywhere uh, in the uh, infield. Now, he's also got no power. He's got some speed, though. We could always use speed. Or do we go Roberto Kelly? What would you do? I wish, I, I wish you were here to give me some... In, give me some insight. Uh, Mitch Williams got a wild thing out there too. Okay, we're uh, we're talking and we're not thinking. Um, I'm thinking Roberto Kelly. We could use an, another outfielder coming up through the minors, and I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to pass on a couple decent pitchers. Um, but we only have five rotation spots in the majors, and we have a lot of minor leaguers. So we're going to draft Roberto Kelly. And then I would draft B.J. Surhoff if he's still there. Boom. Roberto Kelly. Ah, oh, fudge. B.J. Surhoff just went. Uh, let's just check any other names here. David West goes to Cincinnati. Cincinnati, for a first-place team, it's getting some pretty damn good draft picks. Billy Joe goes to Houston. Mark McLemore goes to Philadelphia. Floyd Humans goes to Seattle. Joe McGrain to the Mets. Nice pickup there. Chad Cruder goes to Toronto. A couple catchers come off the board back to back. Roberto Hernandez goes to Montreal. Jim Morris, the... Uh, Disney movie guy from Tampa Bay, the oldest rookie or whatever. He goes to the Padres. That movie was terrible. I don't care. You, you can't convince me otherwise. But the book was great. You should read the book. Ozzie Guillen goes to the Gigantes. B.J. Suroff goes to Minnesota. We just missed him. Okay, who do we have out there in the third round today? We've drafted two hitters. So we're staying on target. Uh, I'm looking at hitters really quick just to see. I mean, I guess Girardi would be a good catcher. Lance McCullers Sr. is in this draft. Okay, so let's just see. What are the best available players? We've got Wild Thing. We've got Bobby Witt through a perfect game or a... He threw a no-hitter on the last day of the season one year. Um, John Burkett, pretty solid pitcher. Um, okay. Uh, I'm thinking we have to go with a pitcher. Um, and we have to go with a good pitcher that maybe we could trade away uh, if we don't need him. I, we don't need a closer. We've got plenty of closers. Um Bobby Witt. We're going to look at Bobby Witt real quick. We only want people who have fastballs above 90. We're looking for strikeout pitchers. Wow. In high school, they batted 099 against him, and that wasn't even his best. He had 092 his junior year of high school. Um, okay, so maybe Bobby Witt, maybe not. Oh, the gambler, Kenny Rogers. Now, we know he doesn't throw hard. I'm really, not a big fan of left-handers. Bob Kipper, I don't care. See, uh, John Burkett, 89. Gosh, darn it. Nobody throws hard. You know, I would take a starting pitcher that threw hard and maybe won't last as long. Maybe we take a flyer in the third round on Terry Taylor, originally a Seattle Mariner uh, prospect, and um, he's actually got a couple baseball cards out there. He just never panned it out. Look at the control is puke. Uh, but he's got some pop, and um, he's got two pitches. Maybe somebody can teach him a third. 
And Bob Malacky, do we look at him? Yeah, 89. I'm thinking we go to, we go with the number one player on the board, according to our scouting department, and we see if we can't uh, turn him into somebody big. We're taking Terry Taylor with our number three third round pick. Okay, let's take a look at the... Oh, Bobby Witt was still on there. Let's see. Uh, we took Terry Taylor. After we, after we make a pick, Cincinnati takes the best player on the, that's left over. Um, they know what they're doing. Mitch Williams goes to Cleveland. Wild thing in Cleveland. That makes sense. Uh, Luis Aquino. Rich DeLucia. Rico Rossi. Joe Girardi goes to Pittsburgh. John Burkett goes to the Dodgers. Bob Kipper goes to Montreal. Hee <laughs> hee. Michael Jackson goes to Oakland. Uh, Kenny Rogers goes to the Gigantes. Steve Searcy, future Detroit Tiger pitcher, goes to Baltimore. Okay. So, uh, wow. Uh, we saw that Bobby Witt is still available. Uh, we have Craig Wilson. Um third baseman out there Jeff Hewson second base uh, Naboa Jose Gonzalez Jeff Rebele some people Mike McFarlane how's he so far down the list maybe if Mike McFarlane's there next round we'll take a catcher um, yeah there's I mean we'll show you the whole list here and, uh, yeah, Eric Nolte taking up the bottom rung. Okay, so, man, it's hard to say no to Bobby Witt, right? Uh, Craig Wilson, third baseman, not a, lot of, not a lot of much of anything. Good defensively. Um, we could, I mean, we could use a third baseman. Francisco Melendez. I don't actually know who that is. Uh, but I'm guessing he's not good. Dwayne Ward, closer for the Toronto Blue Jays. Um, okay, so I'm sure this is exciting for you as I'm thinking this over. I'm thinking we go with the ghost of uh, Craig T. Nelson. Um... Craig, Craig Wilson. Uh, we're going to go with Craig Wilson. Ray, a peak of 91. And a third baseman. And we are, we're sticking to our guns as we uh, draft batters for the future, this, this particular draft. So, Craig Wilson, welcome to Detroit. Okay. Now, let's uh, just quick recap here. Bobby Witt goes to Cincinnati. That's the way that, I mean, Cincinnati's got a hell of a draft. Houston goes to Boston. Uh, Melendez goes to the Braves. Lance McCullers goes to the Mets. Mets are drafted a lot of pitchers. Tom Lampkin, I love Lampkin, goes to Montreal. And Dwayne Ward goes to the Angels. Okay, so... That means Mike McFarlane is still out there. So we'll draft a catcher. This is easy for us. Uh, Jim Lewis. This is my friend. My friend. My former work buddy, Jim Lewis. And how can I pass up Jim? From Jackson, Michigan. Right there. Not too far from where uh, I grew. I mean, maybe 35 minutes away. Drafted by the Padres in real life. That's the team he played for. Once gave up a home run to A-Rod. Or something like that, I believe. Okay. Um, sorry, Jim. We're going to go with the catcher. We're going to go with uh, Mike McFarlane. No Billy Ripken. So, Mike McFarlane. Welcome to Detroit. Look at the brothers down here, too. we got Chris Quinn and Ozzy Canseco. All right, uh, so we're drafting Mike McFarlane. Welcome to Detroit, Mike McFarlane. And uh, Cincinnati drafted Kenny Williams, the 
GM of the White Sox, is he still that? I don't know. Lenny Harris, great pinch hitter to the Yankees. Dibs goes to St. Louis. Ozzie Canseco goes to Boston. Jim Lewis goes to Houston. Good for him. Um, Bill Bean goes to Pittsburgh. Billy Ripken goes to the Dodgers. Chris Quinn goes to the Padres. There you go. With his brother. And, uh, yeah, we got so this is probably our last draft pick. Thanks for hanging in there, folks. Uh, we still have to look at the box score. If you're still here, uh, thanks for having nothing better to do today. Um, now I think we throw in a relief pitcher, somebody that's got a live fastball. I don't really see anybody else here that really um, tickles my cockles. Uh, let's take a look here. Um, Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to take a look at fastballs. 91 for Malloy, we like that. Kylie, 89, 89. 90 for Bill Wilkinson. 93 for Joe Skulski. Schwabi, Detroit Tiger, in his time. Ron Wrighton Award, also a Detroit Tiger, 91. Mike Perez, Loined. Anybody top 93? We're just going to burn through these real quick. 92. I didn't even see who that was. Dave Meads. We got a batter. A couple hitters. 89. 91. Okay. I think we've seen all we need to see here. 90 for Nolte. Okay, so Skulski has a 93 mile an hour fastball. He just doesn't know where it's going. And I, I like that about him. Uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take Joe Skalski. Never heard of you before today. You're a Detroit Tiger. And that'll do it. That'll round it out. Joe Skalski, where are you? Right there. So Chris Cron goes to St. Louis. And Chris Crone, I guess. Uh, Doug Strange, Detroit Tiger. To Boston. And Willie Fraser is Mr. Irrelevant with pick number 156. Okay, let's pull up this hideous box score. Player of the game, Sweet Lou Whitaker. Hope you enjoyed the draft. Hope you, uh, well, I'm sorry if I punished you by watching the game. There was nothing we could do about the game. We did get a home run from Whitaker, which was exciting. Everybody in the bullpen gave up a run, but Brian Kelly, who did walk three, just a poor performance overall. Uger was having such a good go. Uh, I guess he was due. And uh, Baltimore is still one of the better teams. Take a look there at the uh, box scores. Boddicker gets the win. Two and three on the season. Greg Luzinski hits his 11th home run. So that's going to do it. We're going to come back tomorrow. There's a day off. We'll advance and I'll let you know what happens. Uh, we didn't even look at the transactions other than the um, other than the uh, the draft. But that's fine. We'll... we'll um, recap tomorrow morning and we have the robot race now that we go home and face the cleveland indians so until then thanks for watching everybody and have a great night